taking up a significant amount of pitch space on the field. You're picking up that. Sorry. Absolutely charming. Come to language, please. Yeah. From dementia down there. Why? <laughs> turn, turn round. Turn round a minute. Does that look like the FA Cup from the back? <laughs> oh, and there we go. Welcome to Melrose High School for the 2018 Capital Football Charity Show match between Canberra Olympic and Tuggerong United live on Bar TV Sports. I'm Russ Gibbs, your commentator for this evening. Joining me, as usual, Steve Forshaw. Steve, back for another season of MPL football in Canberra. Excited to be back for this one. Yeah, looking forward to it. I mean, it's a good way to start the season. The Charity Shield last year um, featured one of the teams that we'll see again tonight, uh, Olympic and against Tigers. But tonight, Tuggies, a new look Tuggies under a new coach with some new faces take on the reigning champions it should be an interesting fixture plenty of changes to both teams from last season but there's plenty of players unavailable as well Tuggeranong have up to nine unavailable this evening and Canberra Olympic have five the main absentees of course for Olympic this season Stephen Dominici Josh Gulewski Jordan Sakenis all three of them have gone this season alongside Adrian Makor that's a lot of goals that they've lost around about 40 goals from last season but they've recruited well to fill those gaps yeah, well, Nicky, Nicky Popovich has joined them and play up front and is a proven goal scorer at this level. So I don't know that they'll miss them, those players, that much. It'll be a matter of how quickly the new players bed into the Olympic system. Um, but I'm not, I'm not concerned that they've lost those players. I think it's time for a freshen up after two or three really good seasons, and this has given them the opportunity to do that. And the new players that they brought in, solid performers, no reason why they can't continue to do well. And Tuggerong up to six new players in the starting lineup today, which we'll go through shortly for you, and a couple of youngsters as well um, being given the opportunity today. It's always good in these games to get some youngsters, uh, get some minutes under their belts in case they're needed earlier later in the season. Absolutely. I mean, this fixture, you're not playing for points, but it is a game that both teams will want to win. Um, but if you need to throw in some younger players to give them some first-grade experience, you don't get a better opportunity than what this fixture offers tonight. Looking at the form of the two sides coming into this one, both teams have played three matches in pre-season. Canberra Olympics started off with a 3-3 draw away at APL Leichhardt Tigers, and they beat MacArthur Rams 4-1 um, before rounding off their pre-season with a 6-2 win over ANU on the weekend. Michael John with a hat-trick, responding quite well to the introduction this week of Dominic Giampaolo to the Canberra Olympic ranks. His, his position may have been under threat, and talking to Frank Keisha before kickoff, that's some way to respond, isn't it? When you think your position might be under threat, come out with a hat-trick and say, how can you drop me now? Yeah, MJ will be absolutely delighted to have sort of answered um, the pressure that may have been brought as a result of Giampaolo signing. I mean, Giampaolo is returning to his roots in some way because um, he, not that long ago he was a regular member of the Olympic starting eleven. Um, but MJ has always shown a lot of potential and last season, apart from um, the serious injury that he suffered, he might have gone on to add to that goals tally that you previously referred to. Great, great response from uh, Michael, and I'm sure that he'll be looking to add to that tonight. Another interesting signing in the Olympic lineup is Rocco Stryker. He's uh, come back over from overseas, had a spell playing professionally, I believe, in I think it was Croatia, was it, or Macedonia, one of those two countries, one of those countries over there, Serbia, uh, the Eastern Bloc, former Eastern Bloc ones, and. He's a player that's showed some real skill and ability um, for Canberra United in the youth as an overage player in the youth side, um, playing in those in in that sort of country over in the Eastern Bloc it is a tough, tough gig for him. And to come back here, they're expecting big things from him at Olympic. I should imagine there'd be a lot of expectations towards Ross. Um, but he's had a summer playing in a fairly high standard youth competition and apparently acquitted himself quite well. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he goes against a Tuggeranong side that on paper, although a little inexperienced, looks quite strong. 
Well, looking at the Tuggeranong team, um, they've played three matches pre-season and they've won all three of theirs. They beat Port Kemble away 4-2 before beating Narrabunda 2-1. Uh, a bit of a dogfight, that one, but it generally is when you're playing Narrabunda on those kind of surfaces in pre-season. A good side they've got always at Narrabunda, difficult side to beat. And rounded off last week with a 4-1 win over White Eagles, who are one of the form teams usually in capital football, um, the Capital League here. Uh, so from their point of view, Mitch Stevens will be pretty happy with what he's seen so far. Yeah, particularly I think the result against Port Kembla, who are the reigning champions from the South Coast, that's a, that's a good result. Um, and, you know, you've mentioned that there are a number of players that from the starting 11 that uh, might be might have been playing tonight. Um, but the side they've put out clearly is capable, and there is no reason at all why Tuggeranong can't expect good things this year. Well, they are missing a handful of players, as I mentioned. Sean Kitty, Cameron Doherty, Liam Highmore, Matt King, Josip Yadrich, Daniel Roberts, Connor Nolan, uh, Fernando, their Chilean export from, uh, import from last year. And also Mitch Steenbergen pulled out this morning. He was in the starting lineup. Unfortunately, he's had a, a bit of a family emergency, so he's had to pull out close to kickoff. So they are missing quite a few players. But looking at the squad they've got, which we'll run through in just a second, they've got a lot of depth this year, which Tuggerong perhaps haven't had in the past. Yeah, I think it's been a long time coming for the Tuggies. They've been looking for this sort of quality. And credit to Mitch Stevens, he's been able to attract players from that he's known from previous clubs. Regan Walsh has come over from Gungarland, Steenbergen, who you're saying is not available tonight, but he's followed him across. And I think um, the return to Canberra of Sean Murphy, who was part of uh, Mitch's squad at Gungarland a couple of seasons ago, will also make a big difference to him. But the quality in, in depth is something that Tuggies have been lacking over the last couple of seasons, and this year they've got it. By Sean Murphy, you mean Shane Murray, of course. Yeah, Sean Murphy, the yeah. former coach of Tuggerong United, brought them, uh, came in last year as we see the two teams coming out onto the field. Sean Murphy, of course, was in charge of this team last year and did a great job for them. And we're going to run through these two sides as they walk out on the field. Tuggerong United are playing in the green and white hooped shirts. Their team, Rory Larkin in goal. Four at the back, Jamie Vincombe, Regan Walsh, Marlon Thompson, who's an under-20s player who's come in for Steenburgen, and Marco Gaia switches to left back. Their midfield four, Isosia Hege, Shane Murray, John Chirek and Andrew Slavic up front, Tom Padgett and Danny Sokovsky. So all new look there, and uh, I've been hearing good things about Tom Padgett and Danny Sokovsky in pre-season. They've been amongst the goals. Well, we get to see them in um, a more competitive environment tonight. I mean, Tom's been around for a little while, and he's sort of looked to be going to be, looked to be one of the lads with a lot of potential, and then seemed to go off the scene for a little while. But he looks fitter this year than he has been for a while, and he was being partnered by um, a young player that has the credentials to actually find the back of the net on a regular basis. So they'll be looking forward to scoring, that's for sure. Olympic for their part of uh, have a new formation we're expecting to see. Three at the back, Tim Bobolus, Nick Bobolus and Nathan Medjic patrolling that area in front of long-term goalkeeper Angelo Constantinou. Their midfield, Michael Jong and Michael Reeve wide, Rocco Stryker and Daniel Carbataldo in the middle. Just in front of them, Jeremy Habtamarin and Tom McLaughlin provide lots of en energy and industry up front, Nicholas Popovich. So we're expecting a lot of movement in there and uh, quite an attacking midfield and a big job for Daniel Carbataldo in that group. Yeah, I should imagine that if uh, Tuggeron can isolate Daniel then they can get, and get numbers around him, then it might be a way forward for them. But it looks a good side, the Olympic side. I mean, it's still got the likes of Robbie Kadanak to come back in, and Robbie Kadanak has been the outstanding player in the ACT over the last couple of seasons. Um, so, like Tuggeron, they can expect to strengthen as the season progresses. Um, but this is a good lineup, strong lineup, and it'll be interesting to see how they go with the, uh, the new system and some of the new faces. You mentioned Robbie Katnach not being here tonight, alongside Josh Calabria, Phil Yarnold, Bernard René and Victor Yanis. Some real experience coming back in for Olympic. Looking at the two benches, Tuggerong United, Tom Barton, and then a trio of youngsters, Ben Minot, Josh Wilde and Eddie Coggan. A little bit more experience on the Olympic bench, Oliver Wiedeker, Nick Faust, Ali Sawan and Dimitri Paraskos. So, interesting to see which teams, uh, which uh, who will come off the bench and... Show us what they've got as Olympic already in the blue shirts, blue shorts and white socks to get us underway. Tuggerong United just going for a quick pre-game shot. And Steve, put your put your uh, reputation on the line before kickoff and uh, give us a prediction for this one. I think we'll get a high-scoring match and I fancy Olympic just to shade it, although I'm not riding Tuggerong off completely. I think there's probably too many of their regular first grade missing for them to actually get the result, but I think they'll be competitive for the 90. It's an interesting venue, this one, Synthetic Field. It's quite next to a high school. It's not one of the usual NPL fields we have here in Canberra. We're stuck on the back of a very low grandstand, and the sun is shining in our eyes across the field here, so it's going to be a 
tricky one for us today, but we'll see how we go. Olympic about to kick off. Well, we're waiting for the match officials. Haven't done their job, Steve. Might as well get going for the season. Let's, uh, let's mention the match officials. Bruno Kells in the middle, uh, very good referee. Um, got a lot of experience on the line in Owen Goldrick. FIFA approved Owen Goldrick now. Adam Powers and Alex Toomey is the fourth official. So big one for the referees as well, Steve, in pre-season and getting, getting their eye in early. Yeah, I think it, the referees probably look forward to these sort of fixtures as much as the players do because it gives them a competitive match before the actual season starts and they'll be wanting to tune in and tune up just as much as everybody else that's either here watching or participating. So yeah, big game for the officials as well. So we are just waiting for the nets to be fixed. Always get kicked out during the knock around, don't they Steve, by these players and a bit of keen to get some shots away on target. Tugging on we're expecting with a new look side. A fair few of them have come from Gungalan, so they know each other's play as well. Mitch Stevens, the head coach, his first game, obviously a competitive game for Tuggerong as well. Um, for Mitch, brought a few faces over that he knows as well, and that can only help him, I guess, in settling in. Yeah, I think the transition from um, his last job at Gungalan to where he is now at Tuggerong is made a little easier with some familiar faces joining him. Um, but I think Mitch is the sort of young coach that's coming through the system in Canberra that will look forward to the challenge that coaching a club like Tuggeranong brings. I mean, realistically, with the junior base they've got, um, the sort of players that they should be able to attract, Tuggeranong can or should be the stronger team on the south side of Canberra, and that's what the competition needs. If, you know, if you've got the likes of Bill Connor Good on the north side, then... Uh, the south side needs Tuggeranong as well. And then you have the likes of FC and Olympic that capture that central Canberra area, if you like. So Mitch has got a big task in front of him, a big job in front of him, but I think he'll relish the challenge. It's a big season in Canberra, this one as well. We're expecting uh, Canberra Olympic, obviously, to be there or thereabouts at the end of the season they, with the squad they've got very strong. Of course, there's other teams. Canberra FC need a big year this year after missing out last year. They w generally one of the form sides in Canberra. Uh, Kuma Tigers have, re have uh, recruited pretty well, I'm hearing as well, and so have Gungarland United, but this Tuggerang outfit will be hoping to make the four. They haven't made the four for a long time, and Balconi United, of course, under new management up there, where you are as well, Steve, in the under-18, so interesting season coming up, which is about to start very, very shortly. Sorted the net problems, and we are underway in the 2018 Charity Shield. Early touch for Tim Bobolus. Striker, we're expecting a lot to go through Rocco Striker. You can already see the three at the back for Olympic that Frank Asia said they would play. Noticeably, Tuggerong sitting off early. Here's Bobolus, chipping one over the top. Walsh met it, and Chirik finds Thompson, and the youngster straight into McLaughlin. Not the early touch that the young boy would have wanted, but bit of head tennis and it's going to be Tom McLaughlin who brings it down out of play. Marlon Thompson there, Steve, under 20 centre-back. He's a big boy, isn't he? Very well built for a centre-back. Yeah, he's got the perfect build for a centre-back. He's um, he's a man mountain, isn't he? For under 20s, he's doing really well. But he, he'll need to settle down and get himself into the pace of the game. Um, his first touch wasn't all that encouraging, but a long way to go. Happens to Marion, exchanging passes with Popovich. Breaks for McLaughlin. He's going to go wide towards Reeve, but that's easily picked off at the back there by Jamie Vienkuman. Off come Tuggerong for the first break with Isosa Heggie. He's got bags, bags of pace and skill, but he's overrun that one slightly, and Magic just sends it into the toilets, I think it is. Yeah, the canteen area over on the far side into the, into the car park near enough. Up towards Padgett, off the throw. Good strength from Padgett. Cole Batale has robbed him there. And the Owen Goldrick signals for the free kick. Bruno Cole was going to let that one go, I think, wasn't he? And, and Goldrick pulled him back. Yeah, it was a late decision, but if it's the right one, I guess you go, you go with it. Um, it didn't look to be much in it, but we're a long way away. Owen's a lot closer, and he is FIFA qualified now, isn't he? Bruno Cole didn't call for the VAR. It's not here today. We have three, three or four qualified referees in the stand as well. They can be our VAR officials. Just looking down there now, was it a free kick? They're nodding their heads, so one for Owen there. Tick on his FIFA-approved badge. We'll send this to Set Blatter so he can have a look at it. First free kick, dangerous area. Opportunity for Tuggeron to swing this one into the box. 
Pudgett's an obvious target on the far post. That's swung in towards him. Up goes Cherik. There is Pudgett with a header, and it's just over the crossbar. He got in on the goal side of Nathan Magic and won it. And he is an obvious target, and he did well to get that head on it. And when he did, he probably was disappointed he didn't get, get it on target and force a save. Yeah, he was in a good spot. Free header. Should have hit the target at least. But it's um, fairly obvious that Olympic set up then with a zonal sort of defensive system. And if they're not on the toes, they're going to sort of find the bigger boys in the air are going to cause them problems. Beautiful switch that by Magic to John, who scored the hat-trick last week against ANU. Goes back to Bubbles, Striker. Tackled there by Padgett, and then in the end it was a foul by Turek. Carpataldo thought about going quickly, but got the call from Nick Bobulus to tell him to hold it up so that both him and Nathan Magic can trot up to the edge of the Tuggerong penalty area. Expect Stryker to dink this one towards the big central defensive pairing on the far post. Interestingly, Magic standing in that offside position, trying to suck the Tuggerong defence back. It's something that they're not going to fall for at the moment. Let's see what they can do off of this. Striker clips it towards the far post, towards Bobulus, and the flag goes up for offside anyway, and just overhit that one. But early signs are we might have a quite open game. Yeah, I, I think I think so. The um, Both teams are trying to get the ball down on the deck. Olympic using a very, very patient build-up. Tugren on just sitting off a little bit in the early stages. But at least they're trying to play some decent football. Vincom sent that one down the line towards Hege, and it's a good ball too as the winger picks it up. One-on-one -on -one with his marker and just skips past Magic into the box, and that's the skills he's got. Did he get a shove in the back there? No, says the match officials. Stumbled over. Promising start, though, for Associate Hege on that wing. Reeve finds Hab to Merriam. Now Colbert-Taldo to McLaughlin. Touch forward is read by Walsh. And striker goes back to Constantin. Uh, you know a lot about Isosa Rehegi, I guess, Steve. Um, he came through the Belcon in youth ranks and bags and bags of skill and ability. Sometimes his consistency lets him down a little bit. But as he matures, we're expecting to see him uh, become a very, very good footballer. I, th I think this is the breakout season for him. He needs to make something of himself this year. He's had a season with Tungrenong where he did reasonably well after his move from Belconnen. Pace is his obvious weapon, um, but it, it can be really frustrating because... Um, you know, he gets into good positions, then his touch deserts him. On, on song, one of the hardest players in the competition to stop. But when he's not on, he is, in fact, a frustrating player. So Olympic winner corner. So I think uh, when you were at Belcon and I watched a Sosa play in the 18s once, and he scored six goals in one game, and a week later, he couldn't hit the target for love nor money, unfortunately. But he has matured, and we're expecting a lot of him this season for Tuggeranong United, and I'm sure he'll be amongst the goals. Here's the first set piece. This is going to be the, the annoying aspect, I guess, about this evening is that the ground we're at is surrounded by fences and fetching the ball. We could send some uh, some of these refs as ball boys. McLaughlin will take the corner. Right for you. It goes short this time and smashed away by Regan Walsh up towards where we are on the halfway line. Not sure whether that was a set move or whether McLaughlin just got that one wrong. It, it, what, it, it, playing on a synthetic circus does get take some getting used to, and if he was trying to get in the, that in the air, then he failed dismally. But it may well be something that they've worked on at training. Bobless with a throw right in front of this stand here, smattering the supporters around it. It's Cobertaldo, neat and tidy as always. Bobless. Colbertado again. Right for it. Chips that one down. John's after this. Roy Larkin's come a long way and he's got there, but he's bounced it off the head of John. Play on, says the referee, and it's John stopped there briefly, and I think that was to his detriment because he may have had the opportunity. There was no call from the referee, and I think it was probably the right call as well. Uh, yeah, I think there was a, just a clean drop. I mean, the pressure was applied, but there didn't appear to be a lot of contact there, and the goalkeeper would be a little disappointed with his handling there. Padgett won the flick on, but with the use of an illegal use of an elbow. Bruno Cal explained to him what he's done wrong there. I haven't seen Andrew Slavic in the game yet on this near side at all. Most of the attacking for Tuggerong has come down the opposite flank. So Tim Bobulus with this free kick. Clips it up towards Popovich, who again has been fairly isolated early on. And nicely tidied up by Vinkum. Roy Larkin. Sends that one deep towards a Heggie. 
Magic Half wins the header. And Heggie's happy to let it go for a throw. There's Vian Coombe. Walsh switched towards Slavic, but he's overhit that one. And that's a bit of pre-season rustiness there from Regan Walsh. You could see what he's trying to do. Didn't quite come off. No, good vision, poor execution. But like you say, rustiness at the early part of the season. Both sides just sort of slipped into a more direct sort of approach and it's sort of detracting from the spectacle a little bit. They were better in the early stages, just keeping the ball, keeping possession, trying to find a penetration pass rather than go long and early to the front two or front three. Thompson won that header. He settled in very well for his first match at this level. Young Marlon Thompson, his striker. Magic with his unfavoured right foot and it's a sweetly struck ball out towards Reeve but vincom has been quite tight to the tricky winger had trials with the futsal ruse Michael Reeve another former Belconnen player in this Olympic ranks his Haptomerium to McLaughlin back to Haptomerium this little triangle didn't quite work and Larkin's out both sides trying to play football Steve though which is quite nice to see yeah, I mean, there's some nice combinations in there, but I was just saying before that they've got, they're starting to go a little bit direct, and there's Larkin's example of it. Um, and that detracts from the spectacle, from my point of view. Yeah, it's a long clearance looking for, for Padgett. Talking to Mitch Stevens before kickoff uh, earlier in the week, and he was telling me about Tom Padgett has been improved immeasurably from when he was in the Capital League with Western Malonglo. He's lost a lot of weight. He's got a fair bit of pace about him, and his physical size is obviously going to be a problem for teams as well. But as you say, it can be a detriment in the fact that they always look for that long ball because of his size. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, um, you've got to vary your game a little bit, and certainly it's not something that you would ignore altogether, but you don't want to be doing it as the default position. For a slick surface here, the synthetic, of course, and that didn't hold up from Michael John to Jeremy Habtemerium, and to throw which Marco Gaia takes quickly is Churik. Two blue shirts on him straight away. I mean, does well. A bit lucky off of McLaughlin there, but keeps possession. Here's Walsh. Tug along look to work it out from the back. They do that quite well. Here's Vincom up towards halfway. Sliding it forward towards a Heggy, but Magic had read that one well. And pressure in midfield. Here's Paget. Sokovsky. It's the first real touch, and he's been bundled off the ball by Carbataldo. Med uh, that was Gaia and there's a shot on the turn in the end by Andrew Slavich. I think he wanted to just get involved he's been a little bit isolated on this wing 10 minutes gone live on Bar TV Sports here with Capital Football the MPL Charity Shield Canberra Olympic nil Tuggerung United nil bit of a lack of goal mouth action so far Steve reasonably tame start but they'll work their way into it and the game will become a little bit more passionate shall we say yeah, early stages. Angelo Constantinou, the Olympic goalkeeper, seen it all and done it all in his career in Canberra. His magic. Olympic happy to build from the back as usual. And then Bobolus chips one forward, but McLaughlin had strayed, so he left it to roll through to Rory Larkin. Just looking for something to snap this game into action a little bit Walsh nicely done by Vincum looks quite accomplished there in that fullback position at the moment the former Gungarlan player and the Heggie's back to Rob Michael Reeve or oh, Magic rather Vincum's done quite well so far at fullback he has he's um, he's had a lot of touches in the early part of the game and his distribution has been quite quite solid he's played a couple of nice balls down the line and skipped past Michael Reeve there like he wasn't involved at all but I think Reeves will be a little disappointed in the way he defended it but well done to the fullback that's a free kick against Magic for leading with the elbow on Padgett they've gone long and early again and that's an easy clearance for Tim Bobolus Slavic picks it up now Gaia finds Churik back to Gaia now Slavic he kind of pulled out of that one and given it away to Colbertaldo. A little one-two with Popovich asking a lot of Colbertaldo. And Slavic wins it back and does well for his team. There's Shane Murray. 
He's got it back again in midfield. Clips that ball forward, and that's a delightful looking ball as well towards Ehege, who's got the pace to get round the back here. So, so Ehege, can he pull it back? He can't. And a free kick has gone against Magic for a shirt pull, I believe. Good ball from Shane Murray as well, and we know he's got that in his locker, and it's a good signing for Tuggeron. Yeah, he's, his range of passing is excellent. I mean, him and John O'Tarek playing in the middle of the park are very, very similar in terms of they want to lend possession to other players around them. But Murray has the ability to just put one over the top and get the pace of a, a Heggie into the, the uh, into spaces behind the uh, back three of the Olympic. Let's see what Murray can do with this set piece. He's lined it up. He found Padgett with the last one on the far post and wasn't too far away. It's good at the set piece. He's gone short this time looking... I think that was for uh, Slavic, was it? Just in there? It snuck in there, maybe? It's difficult to see from where we are, but it was Sokovsky, in fact. Didn't quite find him. And the break is on for Olympic and Popovic. Switches towards John on this near side. And it bounces away from him and it'll be a throw to Tuggerong. There's a little short one towards Sokovsky. They've obviously tried that in training. Yeah, they were obviously trying to find a path rather than just lob something at the far post and it's worth, worth a try. And Padgett does well again to challenge with two defenders and he's going to be a long night, I think, for Nick Bobolis and Tim Bobolis and Magic having to battle along with Padgett if they keep playing that ball. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, that suits um, Padgett, doesn't it? But uh, Tuggeranong haven't yet taken advantage of the fact that they're playing three at the back, so they haven't exploited the um, spaces, certainly down the left-hand side as Tuggeranong come out. Right-hand side, different story but they need to sort of try and get into the spaces that are being created by there being a lack of a fullback and the play, an Olympic playing wingbacks. Here's Magic towards Reeve. Comes in field to have to marry him. We let it run. Striker got in there and it's been robbed. And here's Chirek. Looking for the runner ahead of him. He had a simpler pass than that one, but tried, tried the harder one and Magic picked it off. And he'll return the compliment and run at the defence. Here's Popovic. Magic. Look for the one two and on this surface that's always going to be a tricky one to chase for the centre forward. It's always going to run away, wasn't it? Yeah, just over hit and on this surface you're right, it doesn't hold up as much as it would on a normal grass surface. Um, but you know, at least they're trying a little combination, trying something different and it's worth worthwhile persevering with. Well it's good to be back at the football again for twenty eighteen. Plenty of action on Bar TV Sports this year, live courtesy of Capital Football and Women's Premier League and Men's MPL coming up throughout the year. Here's McLaughlin to Tim Bobulus. Squares it off to his brother, Nick. Striker. Uh, Hab to Merriam. Back to Striker. And again, that one's over hit a little bit, I think. And he'll do well to keep this one in Reeve. And he can't quite. So still no saves for either goalkeeper to make. The closest we've come, that header from Tom Padgett. Tuggies will obviously, I think, Steve, look look to get Murray on the ball and see if he can create a little bit more. Yeah, I think so. Um, the, the the more obvious tactic at the moment from Tuggeranong is to try and use a longer pass to either get oh, Heggy in or to hit Padgett and then pick up second balls, where Olympic are trying to get the ball down and play a bit. Both teams showing early signs of rustiness, and I'm sure as the game progresses they'll get better at what they're trying to do. Yeah, this is, of course, pre-season, even though there is a trophy up for grabs. And new systems and new players for both teams. Tim Bobolis to John. To Bobolis again. Tuggeranong again, happy to let Olympic keep the ball at the back there. Magic tries to squeeze one down the wing, and it's read by a Heggie. Stabbed forward by Vincom, and... Picked up by Blue Shirt again as Magic finds Colbertaldo. Under pressure from Chirek and Slavic is going to get onto this and off he goes, Andrew Slavic. Got a bit of pace but unfortunately for him he trod on the ball and left it behind. Colbertaldo. McLaughlin. Now here's a chance for Olympic. Colbertaldo sprayed that one looking for Reeve. He's going to keep this one in maybe. He does get there and looks for the corner. Has he won it? I think he may have and it's good pace from Reeve. Yeah, game's a good move. I mean, Colbert Taldo, a former Tuggeron player, did well to win the ball there, and he's kept it moving. He had a little bit of luck, um, bounced back to him, but he's uh, kept the ball moving, got it into Reeves, who, a bit unlucky not to sort of beat his defender, but has won a corner for his team. It's Rocco Stryker who will go across to take it. 
as the sun goes down behind the mountains here. No floodlights on just yet. I'm assuming they're going to come on, otherwise it'll be quite dark. <laughs> it will. <laughs> it will. That's what usually happens if the lights don't come on. You're right. Start putting some cars behind us and put the uh, beams on. Is it corner to the near post again? That's under hit from Striker. And you again, you wonder whether they're trying something they've tried on the training ground or whether it's just the surface that's playing problems to them. I think it's the latter. I think they're just having a bit of problem getting under the ball a little bit, and it does take a bit of getting used to. Um, but you know, that's two corners they've had. They've both been sort of miss hits. And um, they need to get better. Happy to Mount to McLaughlin. Padgett gets in and firm tackle with Stryker and it's out for a throw. I think Mitch Stevens will be reasonably happy with what he's seen so far from his team and probably want them to, to be a little bit more creative in the middle of the park as Padgett wins the header. And again for the second time up towards a Heggie and Agriculturally just thrashed forward by Nick Bobolus. Marlon Thompson does brilliantly to just stand his ground and win the header. And Habtaman puts pressure on Vinkum and founds him. And got to be honest, Thompson's not put a foot wrong, has he? For someone who's drafted in pretty much at the last minute because of the, um, the um, emergency that Mitch Steenberg had, had today, it's, uh, he's done really well. Yeah, an early, um, an early mistake has been forgotten and he's sort of settled into the game really well. Here he is in possession and... Gives that one away just as we say that. That's the curse of the commentator. That's one for us, Stephen, this season, Steve. We'll chalk that one up. Won't be the last. Popovich finds John. Nicely done. Across comes Thompson. And again, makes up for giving the ball away by winning it and conceding a throw. Reasonable turnout so far in, in the crowd here at Melrose High School. As I said before, not the... Uh, one of our main NPL venues, and generally our players don't need to go and fetch the ball over fences. <laughs> it's all about adaptability. It's Bobolus to Hab to Mariam. Tim Bobolus again. Here's Hab to Mariam. In towards John. Pressure on him straight away, but he still got, kept possession and tried to find Popovich. But Steve, it's a, as I said earlier, it's quite noticeable when Olympic have it in their own half. Tuggerong dropping back 15. 20 metres, they're quite happy for them to play it out of the back. Yes, um, the, the, the lead and Olympic have, the back three have as much possession as they want. As soon as it gets towards the halfway line into that midfield third, they're going touch tight then um, and trying to win it and break early. Um, but Olympic have been good enough on the odd occasion to actually get past that first line of defence and actually create half chances at best. But a wrestling match between Padgett and Tim Bobolis and Thompson's gone down in a heap and will be a free kick to Tuggerong. I'm not sure whether he rolled an ankle or something early youngster, but he's in a lot of pain right in front of us in this main stand. Doesn't look good for him at the moment, does it? No, I'm not sure if it... Yeah, it looks like an ankle injury, doesn't it? He might have just got his studs caught in the this um, unforgiving surface, and that can be quite painful. Well, I walked on it at the start, and it was quite sticky. So maybe his feet got stalked. It's either an ankle or a knee. He's uh, in a lot of pain, though, at the moment, as he... Mitch Stevens comes on to check on him. There doesn't seem to be a physio here for Tuggerong at the moment, unfortunately. And so Mitch Stevens, the coach, is having to come on. I'm not sure where their medical crew will be because this doesn't look very good for Marlon Thompson and looks like Tuggerman going to have to make an early change. Yeah, it's a little disappointing that Mitch has found himself in the temporary or, or immediate role of physio. I mean, you would have thought that a club the size of Tuggerman could afford to get somebody here on a Friday evening to look after possible injuries. But that's, I mean, it's more about the health and welfare of the young boy concerned now. And I think his game's done. He's, he's in a lot of pain. Yeah, I'll be very surprised if he gets up from that one. It was, seemed fairly innocuous. We haven't got the re um, replays here, but it did seem fairly innocuous. And But he did go down in a heap of pain, and it's not looking good for him. The options for Mitch Stevens look like it's uh, the defender, young defender Josh Wilde, another youngster. He's the only defender on the bench. They have midfielder Ben Minot, striker and Eddie Coggan, and a goalkeeper in Tom Barton. As uh, Thompson tries to get to his feet, and you can clearly see that his left ankle is not very good. Marco Guy is going to have to help him off the fields. This is going to have to be an early change, I think. And just after we're praising the young boy, um, for him to to go down like that isn't great, and we wish him the best. I think we're going to probably get a early change. As Thompson's down, and we'll keep an out. 
Looks like Eddie Coggan is going to come on here. This is interesting. Yeah, it might be just a slight reshuffle, and maybe Marco Guy goes back into... Or Padgett, it looks like he's slipping into a central defensive partnership with Walsh. Yeah, that's something that obviously Tom Padgett can offer as well. And a different kind of threat now for uh, the Olympic back three. Eddie Coggan, young striker, quite lively. Uh, movement's good and his pace is good as well, but maybe not quite the target in the air that, that Padgett is. No, but I think he does bring something different. And I remember him as a young boy, where I was a tugger on myself. Uh, his movement was excellent, very, very clever off the ball um, and sensible with it. And I think if he's matured into the player that I thought he could be, then he'll cause all sorts of problems for Olympic. A regular goal scorer in those youth teams, under 18s and under 20s, back a few years ago. Now he needs to just push that on to first grade level and start getting amongst the goals and be more consistent. Good little start to it there with a little bit of a dribble. Here's Sokovsky. It's been fairly quiet for Tagunong early on. They need to get him involved more. And there's a great touch from Popovich. Now here's a chance. Habta Mariam's away here and and he padged in front of him and Popovich is making the run into the middle. Here comes Nick Popovich arriving and it's a brilliant finish from Nick Popovich on the volley. Stretching in front of him. Fantastic ball from Habta Mariam. The first time they've got him round the back. Brilliant cross and he got the uh, finish it deserved as Popovich steers it home. Won an Olympic. Great finish but you can't help thinking that had the young boy that's been injured not had to come off and they've got to put in an emergency central defender, then they might have defended that a little better. But you've got to give credit to Olympic. Down that left-hand side, great touch from Popovich and then great movement to get into the box and get on the end of the uh, pass from Jeremy Haptomarami. There was that initial touch from Popovich that created it, wasn't it? He just took the defence out and all of a sudden created the space. And when Jeremy Haptomarami gets into that kind of area with acres to run into, he's really hard to run down. To be fair, though, once the ball was in, it needed finishing and it got one. Oh, it was a lovely finish, world class. I mean, I, I mean, Nicky Popovich, of course, at a new club, will be absolutely delighted to get off the mark straight away. The strikers always look to get off the mark as soon as they can. And Nicky Popovich is a proven goal scorer, and he's keeping up his um, his record. So one 0 to Olympic. Twenty five minutes gone here. Midway through the half, and it's a a goal that the game needed, I think, and it's got one. Cracking finish as well, and what have Tuggeron got? A bit disappointing for Mitch Stevens, uh, though, though, Steve, when you've, you've defended quite well and they've not created anything, to have that shuffle because of the injury, and then all of a sudden you find yourself 1 0 down. It, it, it's um, one of those things that coaches find particularly frustrating because it's a situation that's completely beyond their control. It, I mean, you can argue that he may not have put Tom Padger there, he might have put Gaia there, but in the, in the long run, He's had to make a change he didn't want to make, and that's what cost him ultimately. It's difficult when you're asking another youngster like Josh Wilds, who's never played a first-team game either, to come off the bench into that role. So you can see why he's done what he's done. Here's Reeve, Olympic lead, good tackle from Vincom. Heggy beaten to it by Stryker, who gets it back from Reeve. That left-hand side again, looking for a ball into the area. McGoughlin was completely unmarked there, and if it had beaten... Uh, the covering defender it would have been an opportunity. Yeah, and they um, they just need to sort of settle down and reorganise now, Tuggeranong, because Olympic have got the sniff of blood. They're actually applying a lot of pressure. The goals lifted their intensity, um, and certainly down that left hand side, the Olympic left hand side, the creating creating problems that can be taken advantage of, advantage of, like we saw with Popovich in the middle of the box. Well, this is the third corner they've had. The first two weren't very much to write home about. Let's see if striker can find one of his targets in the area. Tim Bolas has made a run to the near post. That's a better looking corner and Padgett's won the header. Good piece of defensive work by Tom Padgett. It's been picked up by Nick Bobolas and Danny Sokowski unnecessarily really pulled his shirt and gives away the free kick. It was going out for a throw anyway and the set piece is going to be harder to defend I guess from a throw. Yeah I mean a, a needless free kick. I mean it you're better off defending the throw and he's actually given them an, a, another opportunity to get forward uncontested and only seconds after striker seemed to have found his range with that corner very good looking corner too and Padgett did well to defend it Rocco strikers setting the ball he's got a fair bit of ability from the set piece and we're going to see if his left foot can conjure something here, and that's a wicked-looking free kick that was one in the air at the back by Tuggeron, but it's been 
half headed down and Sokoski picks it up only Habtaman dances his way past one looks to go past the second tries to bundle his way still going Habtaman and gets a shot away it's ricocheting around that penalty area like a pinball and in the end it's prodded clear by Slavic and it's coming straight back again though here's Reeve good touch looks for a curler tried to find Tim Bobolis and Tugger will be happy to get rid of this one and they do well in the end it's Marco Gaia who sent it out the line but there was panic stations there yeah, they're, they're a bit sixes and sevens at the moment following the enforced change. Um, if they can hold out till half time, then there might be a bit of a show to reorganise. Still a fair way to go till then, though, Steve, as well. So, Olympic, as you said, sensing a bit of blood. 1 0 up, thanks to that good finish by Popovich. It's Nick Bobulus. Tim Bobulus has stayed forward, tries to flick it, but guys read that one and wins his team a throw in. Marco Gaia used to play a bit further forward, didn't he, Marco Gaia? And now he's turned into a reasonable, reasonably good defender. Yeah, he's um, he's sort of very versatile, isn't he? Very sort of adaptable player. Um, but at the moment, Olympic is starting to dominate on, in the midfield. They're starting to keep control of the ball. I think Tuggeranong will be looking to get more out of Slavage, get the ball to him a bit earlier and to the likes of Coggan and they need to probably get Murray on the ball a little bit more than he has been in the last 10-15. Yeah, he's been pretty quiet so far, Shane Murray, and we're expecting a lot from him because we know he's got a lot of ability. Showed that in his earliest stint in Canberra before he went to play elsewhere for a little bit. Back in Canberra. Looking to run this midfield for Tuggeranong who trail 1-0. It's Cole Bataldo. Sweeps that one forward. Now, Michael John may have beaten the offside flag. He has, but he's let it bounce, and it took it away from him. If he could have got a foot on that, though, as Larkin was coming out, it would have been a hell of a finish if he had got there, though. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, but it just needed a touch, and it probably beats Larkin. It's a l great ball, great switch, great run, and the run made the pass, really, because he checked his run and then went forward off his fullback and left him in no man's land. Popovich is chasing this one, and Regan Walsh has gone across and scooped that one away from him to concede the throw. It's interesting that when when Walsh gets dragged out of there, um, nobody drops in to make sure they've got the two central defenders, even though it's a, a sort of like a, a John O'Tarek needs to be sort of dropping a little bit deeper, but they're not. They're actually getting caught out. And that seems to be what happened with the goal as well, Steve, is that no one dropped in to help Padgett, who was caught between two minds of either going to the crosser or staying with Popovich in the middle, and they paid the penalty for that one. That's something I'm sure Stevens will see and rectify. Slavic tries to win that, but he's beaten in the air by Tim Bobolis. Again, I've watched Tim Bobolis come up through the youth ranks as well, and he's developed into an imposing defender as well. Oh, yeah, he's a, been a very good player. One, once again, from a former Bill Connor player, but um, since he's moved to Olympic and established himself in the first grade team, he's gone on leaps and bounds, and he's probably now one of the form, certainly right backs in the competition. Murray won that head off the throw, and Guy's under pressure here from Stryker, who wins it. Here's a chance for Popovich. Up against Padgett, tries to send that to John, but that's asking a lot from the winger, and Guy is going to watch that one out, shoulder to shoulder, and that was a nasty fall for Michael John, who picks himself up straight away. Nothing wrong with that from Guy, though, a bit of shoulder to shoulder. The floodlights coming on here at Melrose High. It's a high school you can probably see in the background as well, behind those trees. Brand new facility here. As we hit the half hour mark, live on Bar TV Sports, Capital Football MPL Charity Show, Canberra Olympic 1, Tuggerong United 0. Lack of goal mouth action apart from the goal, Steve, but it's, it's certainly been fairly interesting. I, th I think both teams have done reasonably well, given where they are in their pre-season. I mean, obviously, this is the last major hit out they'll have before the season proper next week. Um, so they'll be looking for a second half performance that's a little bit better again. Um, eliminating the individual mistakes, trying to get a little bit of continuity in play. Um, but, you know, for a pre-season game, it actually, it's been reasonably entertaining. Well, Murray was fouled then. I think he wants to, to, wanted to take the free kick quickly, but there's no movement. So he steady comes short to Padgett. Left-footed, looks to flick that one in towards Sokowski, but he's beaten in the air and the clearance is completed by Michael Reeve. Daniel Sokowski, we know, is capable of goal scoring. He's a... Uh, been on target in pre-season. Got a couple last week against White Eagle, White Eagles, and one against Narrabundah the week before that, and scored a back four for Weldon, um, uh, Weldon Western last season. 
been quiet today, though. He hasn't really been in the game today, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of him if we can, you know, if he stays on for the 90 minutes, I'm sure he'll get better. But he's been in and out of the game in the first 30. He's definitely a finisher, and Tuganong will be looking to give him some chances to show that, much like Popovich got his one chance and steered it into the net past Rory Larkin. Larkin's concession having Olympic ahead. Here's McLaughlin looking for the one two with Popovich. Good defending over there by Venkum again, and that's a corner. So Olympic will load the box again with blue shirts. Some neat one touch, one play football there between um, Popovich and McLaughlin. McLaughlin probably should have swung the crossing when he had the chance. Um, however, he's got the corner, and like you say, that can, gives him an opportunity to get people in the box. And Rory Larkin, not the tallest goalkeeper, but quite physically imposing, and he's got Jeremy Habtamarian just in front of him. The striker swings that one towards the far post. That's going to be too long for Nick Bobless, who looks to retrieve the situation, just runs away from him here. He isn't, he isn't the tallest keeper, is he? But he's uh, fairly agile. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's a, he's a reasonable height for a keeper. He's not, you know, he's not the six foot four that you normally see, but he's um, good on the ground, good in the air, and he is, he is a solid build. So I think he's probably got a lot of attributes going for him. Here's Sokovsky. Well, looked like there was a foul in the middle. There's another Togolong player down, injured in a heap. I think it's, it's Andrew Slavich, just picking himself up. Got caught a little bit late. Referee let it go. And in the end... To add insult to injury, it's an Olympic ball. Yeah, I didn't see, I didn't quite see what happened, but Tuggeran will be thinking that the football gods are against them. The players going down injured. They've already had to make a change or a goal behind, um, and they can't just they just can't get any sort of constructive possession further up the field. So there's a lot to work on for them. Striker looking for the run of John again, and Guy's got this covered. And does well to defend it and concedes the throw-in rather than the corner. And Olympic again send plenty of bodies forward. They're leaving two at the back. Eddie Coggin needing to jog back towards the edge of the penalty area to cover any loose balls. And Tim Bobulis is winding up a, a long throw as he can. Asking for a bit of movement from his players. Goes back to striker. He's looking to create some space for Magic, which he does well. Here is Nathan Magic. Chips it in towards Habtamarian, who's in here. Real chance for Jeremy Habtamarian. This should be two, and it is. Comfortably taken. Once Padgett had missed it, and Habtamarian brought it down, there was never really going to be any other outcome than a second goal for Canberra Olympic, and they lead 2-0. Lovely play from Stryker. He's picked up the ball from the throw-in, changed the point of attack by getting Magic involved. Magic has got a decent cross-in, but the work for defending from Tuggeranong has cost them in that, on that second occasion. Um, that's twice players in the six-yard box have been left with a heap of space and have been able to finish. They'll be disappointed with that. Yeah, once it bounced in, Jeremy Habtamarium got it under his spell and there was never really any chance for Rory Larkin to try and save that from that range and he's just thrashed that one in and it's the second goal and at this stage, Tuggeranong needs a response. They need to regroup and give themselves... A a chance to get back into this one. Here's Gaia. Under pressure from John. Who, very important to see the next guy on this one. Tuggerong don't want to concede again, and oh, it's a long, long way back. Yeah, well, I mean, they've got a major mountain to climb already, but they certainly don't want to be going in to half-time, a third goal behind. But once again, Russ, we saw the situation where Regan Walsh got pulled out, and then nobody coming in to cover him, um, and then Padgett running under the ball made it difficult for the defence. I think Padgett misunderstood the bounce on this surface it bounced too high for him and uh, over his head free kick to Tuggerong here Andrew Slavich won that one Steve mentioned they want to get Slavich on the ball a little bit more in in the final third here's Padgett to take the free kick no real obvious targets up there now that he's taking them in himself and he's going to drop that one into the penalty area and Constantin who's come for this and that's meat and drink for Big Ange He's been doing that for 30 years. He's not going to miss them things. <laughs> Gets it underway again by bowling it out to Reeve, and here come Olympic. Bit more of a spring in their step. Striker, who created that goal. That's a lovely ball to Hapton Merriam, and Larkin slow off his line, and 
he got there eventually but still had to man real chance for Olympic again can he curl this one in headed up in the air and in the end, Regan Walsh is going to clear this, but that was a real chance for three, and Hampton Marin will be disappointed he's not found the target. Or a player. They had plenty of players queuing up on the edge of the box. Once he'd gone round the keeper, he's decided to have the shot, which he was entitled to do. Um, but if he finds McLaughlin or others on that six-yard box, 3-0, game over. Credit to Regan Walsh for stopping that. But at the moment, it's looking like a fairly... one way tied with uh, the blue shirts coming forward. Angelo Constanza, a uh, relative spectator. Hasn't had a lot to do, has he? Um, been competent in what he has done, but it's um, a little bit of men against boys since that first goal and the uh, enforced change. Here's Nick Bobolis. Nicely charged down by Coggan. Here's a chance if Slavic can bring it forward. And here's Coggan into a bit of space, one-on-one. -on -one. Eddie Coggan running at them. The back four, and in the end, he chose the wrong option, really. And away comes Tim Bobolis, and Coggan fouls him with a little clip of the ankles. And... Probably should have dropped the shoulder and gone to the left there, Steve. Well, you know, I mean, there were obviously better options than running into traffic, but that's probably a little bit of inexperience on Eddie's time. And it's symptomatic of, uh, of football at the moment where get into good positions but then don't want to play forward or don't want to take people on. It uh, seems to be risk-averse, and I thought the opportunity was there for Tuggeron to create something there. A bit sharper in their uh, ball movement and execution. There may have been an opportunity. Here they come again, though, and looking for the run down the wing and... Unfortunately, again, on this field, it just runs away from them. And I don't think anyone can begrudge Canberra Olympic their 2-0 lead at the moment. They've probably been the better side, and they've taken the two chances that have come their way. And, and that's and that's a fair assessment, Russ. They've, uh, they've probably only had two clear-cut chances, apart from the Heptamerian one we saw the last couple of minutes. Uh, and they've finished them precisely. Striker has had a major influence on it so far. Just clips that one forward, looking for the run of Popovich. Walsh has read that one there and heads it away. You can see that Rocco Striker, though, is going to make a huge impact on this Olympic team this season. He's involved in everything. They're happy to give him the ball and allow him to dictate. Drops deep, almost like that quarterback position, Steve. Yeah, he's, uh, he's obviously a very, very good player, and Olympic will look to him throughout the season to be the playmaker but that's not that's all that's not all that's to his game he can defend a little bit he creates a little bit his work rate's high and he seems to have a lot of composure on the ball it's a great asset here's john back to bobolus squares it to nick bobolus back to tim again have to marry him he's got dancing feet here's jeremy have to marry him magic in the end, Nick Bobolis has just launched that one forward. Padgett's won it. Murray brings it down well. Now Walsh. He's going to go long switching that play, but John's read that one. Got the call back from Tim Bobolis to come and double team on Slavic, and they did it comfortably. Here's Hab to marry him. That'll please Frank as much as the hat-trick last week, because if you're going to play with uh, three at the back, you need your wide midfielders to tuck in like that, and he's... Um worked really hard to get in the right spots and create the intercept. It's not really worked for him going forward at the moment, has it? But he, defensively, he's been pretty sound. Absolutely. I mean, him and Timmy Bobolos will, I think, develop into a really good right-side partnership. Um, Timmy's got the work rate. MJ's got a little bit of the X factor. And it can be something that you use to the best advantage. It's Tim Bobolos. McLaughlin. Striker. And Kolbatalo tried to set it around the corner, almost worked. His Popovich. Olympic going through the gears at the moment. John. Now Popovich. Kolbatalo, this is a lovely move so far. And he's looked for the ball of Habtamarium, who got away from his marker. And in the end, only a clearing header from Regan Walsh has saved them from going perhaps 3 0 down. Yeah, and no, I, there's an option there, wasn't there, to find. Haptum area. I mean, he's tried it with the outside of his right foot, but if he uses the run and then gets onto his left, he can use his left and stick it in the back of the net himself. Here's Bobolus. Striker again. Camera Olympic there, Steve, clicking into gear. It's looking fairly ominous for Tuggeron right now. Yeah, there's, uh, at the moment it's only one team in it. There's complete domination by Olympic, and perhaps not under... Um, not... Um, Oh, perhaps understandably. 
They've given that one away. Here's a chance. Three on two. Opportunity perhaps for Tuggeron to come forward. Here's Sokovsky. Shooting chance perhaps. Fires it in. A great finish from Daniel Sokovsky at the near post. We said he could finish. He's had one opportunity and he's fairly lashed at beyond Angelo Constantino. And we've got a game on now. Yeah, that's a great finish. I mean, they're three against one. They've taken full advantage of it. The ball's played at the right time with the right weight. And he's finished that with some distinction. They said what they can do coming forward. Shane Murray won the ball and... The weight on the pass was excellent from the midfielder and when Sokoski needed to finish he gave us one with an absolute rifle shot past Angelo Constanza. Not an easy finish at that near post past the keeper of Constantin's stature but dear oh dear Sokoski's given that one hell of a lash. It's funny because we've just been singing the praises of the Olympic midfield in particular striker but they get caught out then three against one and it's um, you know game on. Great finish from Daniel Sokoski and he'll be saying well give me the ball a bit more in those kind of areas and you never know what might come. So from saying 30 seconds ago this was looking ominous for Tuggeron, all of a sudden they're right back in it. It's, it. it's what the game needed. We didn't want it to be one-way traffic. I mean, I'm glad to see Tuggies get back into it from a neutral point of view. It makes it more of an interesting game. First of all, test of Canberra Olympics. Credentials as well as the champions. And the goal that, that Tuggeron needed to get back into it. Larkin sends that one forward, looking for the goal scorer. Sukowski wins a header, asks Coggin to get after it. He will chase it, and that's a good piece of covering defence by Nick Bobolis. Andrew Constantin, who's hardly touched the ball and had to pick it out of the net. And Steve, looking at that again, it's it's that angle. It's it's a really tough angle. You've got to put a fair bit of uh, violence behind that ball to, to to beat Angelo from that angle. Just ask you that about that in a second as Olympic bring that away. Yeah, that's right. I think Ange will probably be critical of himself because he's been beaten at his near post. But he's hit it really well. He's hit it high. And if you're going to go near post, then hitting it high is probably the way to go. Well, here come Olympic in response with John. Plucks that out of the sky, tries to go past Gaia, who's marshed him well. But John's away goal side of him here. Gaia comes back to challenge. Chirek helps him out and Marco Gaia can complete the clearance. Comes short to Slavic and all of a sudden there's a bit of confidence in this tug along side as... Slavic tried to find Gaia's run. Didn't quite work out for him. Closing in on half-time. We're into the final minute of the half. There shouldn't be too much stoppage time. A few minutes, perhaps, for, for the injury to Thompson. This Tim Bobolis will take the throw. Looks for the runner. He's got a big throw on him, and Paget nods that down. There's space for McLaughlin. He could switch this to the left-hand side. Instead goes to striker. He's happy in possession. McLaughlin again. No striker. Olympic happy to keep the ball. And then Magic looks for that switch again, which they've done well, and John's got away from his marker. Opportunity for the winger. Back to Hapton Marion, who scored the second Olympic goal. Now his striker, shooting opportunity, perhaps a Rocco striker from distance. Fires one in, and that's a good save, and the flag goes up. Larkin diving to his right, push that away, and then the flag went up against Popovic. A great save from Larkin. Um, some venom behind that from uh, Rocco Stryker. Great left foot strike. And they've worked it well, haven't they? They've um, taken possession of the ball in left-hand side, halfway line. Got a terrific switch in through MJ. Um, played the ball back into to Ramey again with his feet, has beaten his first defender. Set up Stryker, and a lovely save from a great strike. And a critical save at this point of the game as well, at 2-1 into first half stoppage time. Plunging to his right there, Larkin, and making a fantastic stop. Tuggerong have a free kick. Last chance, perhaps, for them. Shane Murray will put this one down and maybe lift it into the penalty area. Paget's gone forward. Chirek's on the far post as well. This will put the cat amongst the pigeons if Tuggerong could equalise right on half time. Here's Murray looking for the delivery, and it's not a bad one. Looking for Paget. Magic wins the header and concedes a corner and a Set piece for Tuggerong in stoppage time. Murray's finding his range with these. And again, Magic and Bobolus at the back need to be wary of the threat of Tom Paget. Nothing scientific about the Tuggerong approach from the free kicks. It's just getting into good areas and seeing if they can win it. And they've been really effective. Let's see what Murray can do with this set piece. As time ticks away, Slavic has gone to the edge of the box maybe for a cutback and he's got it. Here he is, right footed, chips it in towards the near post, but Angelo Constantin, who saw that one coming from a long way away, and drop kicks it up towards Popovic. Walsh very cleverly 
just let him know he was there and great use of the body I mean he just um, it was obviously going to be a hard take for for Popovich but um, Walsh does really well and it nullifies the attack straight away Constantinou goes long and that holds up and Popovich tries to get in behind Walsh who's under a bit of pressure here and he got to get rid of it and he doesn't he gets a bit lucky it falls for Gaia and he has more time and then clips that one forward looking for the run of Sokovsky the goal scorer Nick Bobulus facing his own goal just sends that one towards the highway and the old petrol station down the back of the field here can fill up while he's there I think it says it's 151 a litre pretty expensive old fuel here in Canberra isn't it Steve it is when you come from McGregor so we're well into stoppage time fourth minute of that which we expect it after the injury to Marlon Thompson and Guy will look to launch this one into the penalty area Padgett brings it forward on the wrong wavelength there with Slavic and that one's thumped forward towards Popovic who'll challenge with Walsh and he fouls the Tuggerong central defender Adam Powers and then Popovic kicks it away and the referee says that's half time and Steve it's been a no rip roaring blockbuster is it but it's been very interesting and that goal from Daniel Sukowski has uh, given us a game until the first goal the game was a little bit stayed um, and lacked a little bit of intensity but the first goal brought Olympic to life um, the second goal looked to have put the game to bed and so Tuggeranong have done really well to get themselves back into it and I think we can look forward to a second half with a little bit more quality and a little bit more intensity and certainly Tuggeranong pushing to try and get back into the game on a more um, and on an equal basis get back to get an equaliser um, Olympic will be a little frustrated that they haven't scored more they had a good chance through Haptomerium but in from a neutral point of view as I was saying earlier on we're looking at a game that's going to go the 90 minutes and that'll keep us entertained well if it is a draw at the end of 90 minutes we're going straight to penalties as it is at the moment at half time it's Canberra Olympic who lead goals from Nick Popovich and Jeremy Haptomerium gave them a 2-0 advantage Daniel Sokowski pulled one back for Tuggerong and at half time here live on Bar TV Sports in the NPR Charity Shield brought to you by Capital Football it's Canberra Olympic 2 Tuggerong United 1 
Welcome back to Melrose High School live on Bar TV Sports. It's the NPL Capital Football Charity Shield. Camera Olympic leading Tuggerong United by two goals to one. And looking around the field, try and find out if there's been any changes. Doesn't look like it. Steve, we're looking forward to a second half where the next goal, as it often is in these situations, is critical. It's certainly, if Olympic had a score next, you would think they'd go on and win comfortably. But Tuggerong have done enough in the last few minutes of that half to get themselves back into the game and they'll be looking to push on from here. They got their goal three minutes before half-time through Daniel Sokowski and it got them back to 2-1 after conceding those two goals which were very preventable from Tuggerong's viewpoint. There's a long ball forward which Paget, who started up front, has nodded out. The two teams as they stand, Olympic have Constantino in goal, Tim Bobulus, Nick Bobulus and Magic across the back. John Stryker, Colbertaldo, Reeve in midfield. McLaughlin and Habtamarian floating in just behind Nick Popovich, who's the lone striker who scored the first goal. That's a free kick to Olympic in the shadows over in the far corner. Tuggeranong have Rory Larkin in goal. Their back four is Vian Coombe, Walsh, Paget and Gaia, Ehegi, Murray, Chirek, Slavich across the middle and up front, Sukowski and Coggan. And I should say Ehegi, we mentioned, I've just said he's up front there. He's gone a bit quiet since a bright opening. Yeah, he, got, he did have a good start, but it seen very little of him in the last sort of quarter of the game of the first half. Um, but he's the sort of player that can do that. He can disappear for a little while and then suddenly spark into life and uh, create all sorts of havoc. The strikers behind this free kick over on that far side. I think Colbertaldo is in there as well. Both of them looking to see who can pick one out. It's going to be striker's left foot, and he swings that towards the far post, and it's headed up in the air and away. Good piece of defensive work by United, and swung back in by Nick Bobulus, and it bounces across the penalty area, and Slavic tries to complete the clearance, and he will do at the second attempt and can bring it forward, but gives it away. It's Colbertaldo. He gives it away in turn, but gets it back in turn. Looking for Habta Merriam. A little pocket of space. Tried to play the one-two with Popovich. And Gaia read it and can bring it away. Here's Chirek. And he's under pressure now and lucky to win the free kick. A bit scrappy there, the start of the second half. Oh, look, it's silliness. Well, a bit of silliness now. As Paget's involved and then there's a swing there. Add in by McLaughlin too. And I think Bruno Kell will just get them both in and tell them to be a little bit less silly and to calm down. A bit of pushing and shoving though here as well and still going. And uh, Daniel Colbertaldo in the middle of it trying to pull his teammates away and Rocco Strike is getting involved and it's all a bit unnecessary and a little bit silly, Steve. It's a, it's a, they've got the free kick and Paget reacted badly, knocking McLaughlin out of the way for no apparent reason. I mean, he's going to suffer the, the sanction. I think Bruno Kell's just telling him to calm down exactly what you've just said there, Steve. He's given the free kick. He's going to go and chat to his linesman, Owen Goldrick, who he of the FIFA badge. He saw it all. <laughs> Having a chat and I'm being corrected by the referees department that it's an assistant referee. Always be a linesman or lines lady. So there's going to be a card here. I mean, Goldrick's advised Bruno Kell. And there was a bit of a swing of an arm by McLaughlin. Probably yellow each would probably be suitable. And whether or not that will be the outcome, I'd imagine be surprised if the sanction's worse than that. But it was enough for Owen Goldrick to come across and have a chat. The assistant referee has played the role of VAR there, I think. Yeah, he definitely has. And he's, he saw them and the VAR screen. In the end, I think Bruno Kell was possibly going to let them get away with it. He possibly didn't see the actual shove that started and the retaliation from McLaughlin. So Goldrick brought his attention to it and both of them pick up a yellow card, which is probably what we should have done in the first place and just we can get on with the game now. Absolutely. Right. It was great for the referees pre-season as well. Can iron out a few crinkles. Larkin sends that one forwards. Sokowski tries to bring it down. And I thought, to be fair, though, they handled it pretty well. I was chipped into the area towards Sokowski, and Konstantin has got it. Yeah, I mean, a more officious referee could have brandished a red there, I guess. Uh, possibly. I mean, when you give the referee an opportunity to make a decision, you've got to accept the consequences. I think he's done the right thing there. Keeps 11 v 11. That's what people want to see. And it was handbags at three paces. So. 
No, I'm done. Early season handbags. But so we see a bit of bit of uh, f action and a bit of uh, feistiness to the match. Doesn't hurt things. Here's Hampton Merriam, robbed in midfield and by Chirik. Here's Sikowski. Does well. Finds Murray. He spreads the play to this near side with his Vienkum. Tries to find a Heggy. Tried to go through him and Magic bundles him off it and it's a throw into Tagranong. Which Jamie Vienkum will take right in front of the commentary position. To Chirik. Back to Vienkum again. Comes off the back of Colbertaldo and headed clear by Tim Bobolis and here come Olympic. Nice touch from Colbertaldo to free Habta Merriam in the centre circle. He comes backwards for some reason and finds Stryker. Wasn't happy with the options forward. His Reeve. Stryker again. Off he goes and that may have come off Marco Gaia last. And it is. It's a corner. Definitely a good piece of defending by Gaia though. His Stryker looked to be getting into his stride. Yeah, they um, closed him down well. But, you know, corner. Another chance to get the ball into the penalty area. And their set pieces have improved since the uh, early ones that didn't get off the floor. And uh, here's Stryker, whose last couple has been pretty good as the wind picks up a little bit here at Melrose. It's been a nice day in, in the capital. Deep one from Stryker again. And again, it's a bit too long. And Bobolus will try and retrieve, which is a difficult thing to do, and just hoiks that one back into the middle. And he's got that all wrong, and it's out over the fence. For a goal kick, and looking at the benches, Steve, and we've got still got young Ben Miner and Josh Wilds, both young boys from uh, the Tuggeranong outfit, midfielder and a defender. And on the bench for Olympic, we've got Oliver Vidica that we haven't seen for a while, Nick Faust, Ali Sawan, and Dimitri Paraskos. And be interesting to see uh, Oli Vidica back in action. Yeah, he's um, more or less had a season off, hasn't he, where he didn't play regularly in the MPL, um, but he brings um, a lot of experience and a bucket load of pace. So it would. It, there is every chance that you'll, we'll see him before too long. But it'd be nice to see some of the young boys from Tuggeron get on an over run too. Here's McLaughlin looking to slide Popovich in, and Popovich has got away here. Real chance for Nick Popovich. But fantastic covering defence from Tom Padgett to win the ball. Beautifully done. Had to time that perfectly. And not only has he done that, he's found an attack as well with the ball out towards Slavic. And Steve, that was a superb piece of defending. Yeah, full credit to the defender. I think Popovich wanted one touch too many but Padgett has got in when he needed to and recovered really well got caught out initially with the ball but has recovered extremely well and the sliding tackle had to be inch perfect and it was otherwise there would have been a decision for Bruno Kell to make his Chirik gets it back again two blue shirts immediately around him though Padgett finds Regan Walsh now Murray Again, he's run into trouble and he wins himself a free kick. Jeremy Habtamerium is a little bit aggrieved. I think it was the one against Stryker. I think he just caught him as he went past him. So, referee's done well again there. Murray takes a free kick, clips that one forward towards a Heggie. Now, he's one on one. Chance for a Sosa Heggie into the area and Magic does well to tackle. Steve Forshaw looking to get brownie points ahead of the NPL season by praising the referees. <laughs> <laughs> Any advantage we can take. <laughs> Corner for Tuggeranong. Now Shane Murray will jog across to take this one. Opportunity perhaps for United to get back into this. And to their credit, since they've gone 2-0 down and we thought the game may be beyond them, they've actually played really well. And Looking a sharper side in this second half. Murray goes short. Led back by Slavic to Hecky. Clips that one in and is headed away by Reeve. First to it is Marco Gaia. Flicked on by Sukovsky and it's broken again. And here's Popovich. He's away on his own, though. Coggins chasing back well. And Nick Popovich is going to have to hold this one up. And Eddie Coggin, for a forward, tracked back and did his job. Did extremely well. Because the break was on. But Popovich just took it right when he could have come left and uh, got had to marry him in. But it was um, really good defending, really good work in transition by the Tuggeranong players. Here's Chirik. Slavic, now Gaia, clips it across to Vienkum, exchanges passes with Padgett, 
looks to take on Reeve. Goes down on the challenge. No foul. And Stryker skips away from the attempted recovery. And off he goes. Rocco Stryker up towards the penalty area. Padgett slides in. Still going, Stryker. And that's a good piece of recovering defence from Shane Murray to concede the corner. But you don't want to dive in on Rocco Stryker in full stride. No. I mean, you skipped away from a couple of defenders there. I think the young fullback will be a little disappointed that he wasn't stronger in possession. Moved the ball quicker even. Um, but in the end, covering defences got across and they've uh, Olympia won themselves a corner. Well, the last two or three strikers overhit. Take a little bit off the old pitching wedge and see if you can drop this in a dangerous area. Off it comes in. Good piece of defending at the back post. Cleared by Guy who got a clattered to the head to, uh, for his troubles. But good defending again. It's Olympic look to turn the screw and reinstate their two-goal lead that was given to them in the first half by guys from... Nick Popovich after 24 minutes and Jeremy Hab to marry him 11 minutes later. Daniel Sukovsky's goal three minutes before the break, bringing Tuggeron back into this one. Here's Tim Bobulus. A bit of push in the back there and right in front of the referee. And Sukovsky getting involved when he probably doesn't need to as well, Steve. <laughs> I don't know. It's a charity match of the pre-season. And, yet, yeah, you want to play it with some intensity, but there's just some silliness going on that just is completely unnecessary. Maybe Mitch Stevens was uh, saying at half-time he wanted them to be a little bit less um, serene on the ball and to ruffle their feathers a bit, but probably not this. <laughs> probably not what he had in mind. No. no, no. I mean, if they think they're going to win games by doing that, they've got another thing coming. And they show they can play a bit of football as well. They've got themselves back into this one. Here's Regan Walsh. I think he's going to have a big season for Tuggerong this year. He's going to need to at the back there. Lead by example. This one's threaded forward and just headed clear by Tim Bobulus. That's a full meaty challenge in the middle of the park from, uh, I think that was Geyer and Colbertaldo coming together. John's chasing this. Padgett has got to be careful and uses his strength well to just shield that ball. There's um, a lack of finesse at the moment in the game. It's all a bit frenetic. You can just settle down and play a bit of football and um, the people that have come to watch can get more enjoyment, I'm sure. Yeah, there's a reasonable crowd in these stands this side and a few more you can see on the far side. Some Tuggerong supporters to our left. Not, not nearly as noisy and vociferous as they usually are, Steve, but probably not had enough beers yet. <laughs> no, it's only, it's only early in the season. Oh. Well, it's a good through ball. Real chance here as they get in behind and Coggan tried to, uh, Tchaikovsky tried to chip it and Constantino came out to save. Second chance here, Sikowski swings it in, headed up in the air by, Med, uh, by Bobulus, and the clearance is completed by Tim Bobulus out for a throw, but that was an opportunity. Daniel Sikowski all of a sudden out of nothing. Absolutely, and it's what I was uh, trying to allude to in the first half, where if you can attack the spaces where your normal fullbacks would be in a, in a, in a four, uh, while Olympic are playing three, you're going to get some joy, and they did on that occasion. Well, maybe they'll try that route again, because it almost brought them an equaliser. There's a throw into the area, and a free kick. For a foul on Colbertaldo. We spoke in the first half, Steve, about Daniel Sokowski being very quiet. Since his goal, he's been buzzing around and he's looked likely again. Yeah, he's um, he's sort of come into the game after a quiet start and the goal obviously has lifted him. Um, but we're still looking for a little bit more from a boy that's got a reputation for being a good goal scorer. And to get back in the game, they're going to need him and perhaps a Sosa to get more involved than they have been up to this stage. Is Colbertaldo switching play again, effortlessly swings the ball out to this near side to Reeve. Takes on Vian Coombe, who stands him up well and concedes the throw. Here's Popovich. Gets it back from McLaughlin. Now have to marry him. And Colbertaldo switches play to the far side again. Olympic. That one's just hooked forward by Nick Bobless in the end, and it's headed clear. And here's a little bit of space for Ehegi if he can bring it under control. Reeves back quickly and does well, and it's broken for Colbertaldo. Now here's Habtomerium. McLaughlin's made the run ahead. Here's Popovich. Habtomerium. Colbertaldo. Plenty of blue shirts forward in this attack. Reeve. Popovich went down on the edge of the area, off the ball. Reeve tries to take his man on. Still going. Here's McLaughlin. We read that one in, a good thumping challenge from Walsh. Tries to bring Tuggerong away. And Coggan sweeps that one forward. 60 minutes played. Half an hour to go. In the charity shield live on Bar TV Sports. Olympic 2, Tuggerong 1. 
John. Striker. Space for Colbertaldo. Might line this one up. Instead goes short. Gets for Popovich. Back to Colbertaldo. Fires one in. It's loose for Popovich and it's brilliantly saved at the second attempt. Not only did Larkin make the initial save, but he was up quickly and denies Popovich on the return. 100% credit to the goalkeeper there because Olympic cut them up at will. Finished with a good strike from Colbertaldo and Popovich maybe should have done better, but the goalkeeper's done extremely well. Brilliant double save from Larkin. Keeps Tuggerong in the contest. Another corner, though, for them to stand firm to. And Stryker will take it again, as he has most of the set pieces. This one's a bit narrower to the near post, and it's just volley clear by Walsh. Colbertaldo and McLaughlin combine. Well, John. Up to Merriam. Looks to combine with John, but Guy's read the situation and can bring it away for the green shirts of Tuggeranong. Scrappy on that far side. Temperature's dropped a bit, Steve. It's getting quite chilly, you know. That wind's quite, it's picked up, like you were saying before, and it's, um, the sun has disappeared. It's just temperature's dropped. But that should help the players a little bit to see how the game. A lovely night for football here in Canberra to kick-start the season. Plenty of action, as I've said, on Bar TV Sports this year from Canberra in the NPL and the WNPL. Two matches a weekend. One in the women's and one in the men's. So plenty of football for you if you like watching local soccer. Here's Paget. Gaia. John was quick to him. And now pokes it into the path of Habtamerium. He's a real handful. Goes down to the challenge, but that'll be play on, will it? Well, Popovich was struggling to keep it in, so that's a good decision again from Bruno Kell. Yeah, he's seen it. He's tried to play the advantage, so he's done well again. He's had a good game, the ref. Really good game. More brownie points. <laughs> More brownie points. We have got a good standard refereeing here, though, in camera at the moment. Steve, a lot of referees coming through the ranks in both the uh, W League and the A League as well. And Bruno Kell, another one? Yeah, the standards improved out of sight over the last four or five years. And um, the standards recognise that at a, a federal, uh, federal level, at a sort of a national level, with um, Owen Goldrick regularly on the line um, with the A League and uh, some of the female referees doing the W League. So it's good, really good. I think we're going to see a change. Do we see a change? There's Nick Popovich is wandering off the field, and it is Oli Vidika who's going to come on. Popovich, I don't think he was particularly happy about coming off. Probably a bit angry at himself for not adding to his tally. It took his goal superbly well in the first half, though, and decent night's work for the young striker. Yeah, I mean, against his former club as well. He was at Tuggeranong for a little while until injury interrupted his uh, stay there. Um, but he would have been pleased to score, and... I should imagine after having a lot of last season off, 65 minutes is probably enough for him at this stage. St his striker dancing around in midfield. Magic. Now we know Vidika's got bags of pace and they've asked him to chase that one and I don't think Farlat would have caught that. You're saying Bolt. Hmm. A long, long way ahead of Oliver Vidika and wasn't going to pick that one up. He's dropped into the left-hand side and it looks like Jeremy have to marry him and Michael John will complete the other, the forward three. It's a bit of a reshuffle for Olympic. Turek Biggs McLaughlin, here's Murray. Sukovsky brings it down well. Tries to find Slavic, who goes down on the challenge of Colbertado. Another free kick for Tuggeranong. Promising position. Chance, a chance to push the big boys forward again. And it wouldn't surprise me that, it's, you know, if the score stays as it is for another 10 to 15 minutes. Just watch this. Yeah, Murray goes early. Coggan volleys it back across goal, and that's dipping. And I think Constantino had it covered the whole way. Eddie Coggan put his hand up straight away. He knew he'd uh, got that one all wrong. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it wouldn't surprise me if Tuggeranong revert to throwing Padgett back up front if they're still in need of an equaliser as the game winds down towards the end. Um, and maybe John O'Tarek could drop in there or maybe even go to a back three. We'll see. Still plenty of time to play. It's magic. As you'd expect from a pre-season game, there's no real urgency. It's not been played at 100 miles an hour or anything like that, but it's always nice to start the season with a victory and a, and a trophy in the cabinet. Here's Bobolus. 
They've run out of room on that far side. Sokovsky. Two shirts around him again, and Kobotalo comes away with it. Now John. Reagan Walsh went across and cleared it. And the upshot is a tug along the throw. Difficult for Mitch Stevens, though, I guess, with two real young players on the bench, whether or not to throw them in at this stage? In some ways, yes, because obviously he wants to get a result. But in some ways, it makes his job a little bit easier because there's not a lot riding on this game. And it's an opportunity to give them some experience. Magic sending away. John with a nice little touch. Didn't quite find its way to have to marry him. Oh, here's Gaia. Very strong in possession, as we said. Still going. And Slavic wasn't able to keep that one in. And Olympic looking to up the tempo a little bit. Go a bit faster in their approach play. As we said, plenty of time left. McLaughlin. Striker again sends it wide and gets it back again. Everything going through the tall midfielder. Lifts it to Magic. Space for the left back. Vidic has made the run for him. Swung in towards McLaughlin, who made a great run. Goal side of the defender, and nobody picked him up, and unfortunately he couldn't bring the ball down. No, making those runs from deep, it just caught him out a little bit. And that's probably a function of the fact that it's a relatively new pairing at the, uh, the back, and that's been affected by the early substitution of the young boy. Yeah, McLaughlin's made a habit of stealing in into those areas. I remember a couple of seasons ago at Belcon when he scored about 15 or 16 goals from that exact area. Made a habit of it. But you would expect people like John O'Torek to actually pick that run up and, he, and they haven't done it. And It's just a little bit of a weakness in the um, Tuggeron midfield. It's a chance for Coggan. Vidika's back challenging him. In, challenge, challenging him rather. Ehegi. Looking to stand up his runner. Still Ehegi. Back to goal for Sokovsky. Turns on it nicely and fires a left-footed shot in. Never really going to trouble Konstantinu from there, but good imagination and worth an effort. Absolutely. I mean, if you can get forward and you finish every attack with a strike on goal, you've done reasonably well, especially as you're preparing for uh, next weekend more than this game. Um, but, you know, not a bad effort. Didn't trouble the goalkeeper, as you suggest. It's Colbertaldo. Looking for the run of Vidika. Here is Oli Vidigo and heavy first touch. He's quick enough to get on his own knockdown. Walsh beat him to it, though. Magic to Colbertaldo. Classy touch from Danny Colbertaldo again. Up to Marion McLaughlin. This is slick and well read again by Walsh. And off come Tagorong from Coggan to Murray. I'm giving it away, and they don't want, to, don't want to keep doing that against this Olympic team as striker tries to get through. And for the umpteenth time, it's cleared by a Tagorong defender, Vinkum, to Chirek. Now space for Gaia. Colbertaldo has been the best player on the park by a long, long way. His football, his vision, his touch is absolutely superb. He's picked up where he left off at the end of last year. One of the best players in the league and the player that arguably makes this team tick is a Heggy. What a run this is from Mososa. A Heggy into the area. Now can he find a finish? He fires it low and Constantinou saves at the near post. Couldn't quite do a Leo Messi and squeeze it in past Constantinou. No, and he had players that he could play to, and then, you know, there goes the opportunity to get back on level terms. Great run to go past the two defenders. He's left them absolutely stranded, but then wrong option. Yeah, all his own work to get there. Forced to save, but as Steve says, possibly the wrong option for the striker. Can't blame him, though, once he's getting into that position to have a pop of goal. He's been starved of shooting opportunities this evening. Paget sends that into the car park. It's hit your car, Steve, I think. I hope not. It's a, it's a long way from there. <laughs> Run your own Uber service in Canberra. Ball into the area. John tries to win the header. It's going to come for Vidika. Eddie Coggins with him, though. Here is Vidika. Colbertaldo. John Colbertaldo almost squeezed it through and Paget's penalised for handball. And this is a dangerous situation. We've seen Rocco strike us uh, um, with his set pieces from the corner, Steve. He'll fancy this. Yeah, well, there's, um, this is a strike on goal for sure. I mean, this is perfect range. It's far enough outside the box. 
um, for a, a player with this quality to actually hit the target without having to get it up and down over a wall. Um, dangerous position for Tuggeranong, especially after they've just wasted a golden opportunity to get level. Well, Tom McLaughlin's hanging around the ball. I think he's dreaming right about now as if he's going to get a, a piece of this because I think Rocco Stryker with his left foot has lined this one up and has eyes only for goal. Bruno Cow getting the wall back. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure it's a left foot strike here. I mean, it, obviously the goalkeeper's going to come to this side of the goal. Um, and if he can get it over the wall, that he's going to have a chance to hit the vacant part of the goal. But McLaughlin can actually curl it into that side naturally with his right foot. Well, both of them are behind it. Striker placed the ball very deliberately. Is it going to be a feint? And will it be McLaughlin? Let's see. It is Striker, and he's got way too much on that, and he sent it well over the crossbar. We gave him the big build-up, and it didn't quite work out for him, did it? Yeah, we might as well go on. No idea. He very deliberately placed it, but he didn't get enough on it. He's well, we've got too much on it. A bit like his corners. He's over hit a couple of those as well. Early season for early days for him in pre-season as well. So, I'm sure he'll find his range. Well, practice makes permanent. But he um, he hit that like he hit his corners. There's no doubt about that. Sacrificed a bit of accuracy for pace and went too much in the one direction. Here's a Heggy away from Magic. Should get a free kick out of it and does. Adam Powers on this near side waves the flag. He's just starting, Russ, to give Medjik a few problems. He's just creeping back into the game, and his pace, um, you can't afford to be left behind. We're into the final 20 minutes, live on Bar TV Sports. Shane Murray lining this one up, clips it towards the far post. Padgett rises. He can't quite get there. It's still in the danger zone, though, and it's bouncing around and poke forwards, and somehow... It's not gone in. I think Padgett may have got the last touch to it. And did it clip the outside of the post? It, it certainly looked like it. Yeah, it's um, bounced around in there with nobody actually taking charge from Olympic point of view. And Padgett's pounced. Got a sort of, well, I suppose you call it a volley. But it's just clipped the outside of the post and gone wide. It almost seemed to come off his studs. Yeah, he was reaching for it. But I don't think there's anything else he could do. He did really well to get to it. And he's been a bit unlucky. Yeah, Constantin was absolutely stranded. Going to see another change. Tom McLaughlin is making his way off the field. He's had a good match and a good 75 minutes of play and trotting into the middle of the park. I think this is uh, young Ali Sawan, signed from Wollongong Olympic and had a brief sojourn playing in Spain. He's here to study in Canberra. Attacking midfielder. Likes to take players on as well. And, and he, uh, well, what's going on here? Michael John goes down in the box, and that's got to be a penalty. Now, what's happening here? Adam Powers has his hand across his chair, his flag across his chest. I think this could be a penalty, Steve. It's a nailed-on penalty. I don't know why the referee needs to talk to his linesman at all. But the uh, the Olympic boys stopped because the free kick didn't come outside the box. Um, and unless the rules change, they were probably right. But Go the goal kick? Uh, yeah, the goal kick didn't come outside the box. So it can't be a penalty then, it must be another goal kick if it's not come out of the penalty area. So it's another goal kick because it's not made its way out of the box and even though it was a deft ironed on penalty when Michael John was rugby tackled in the box, it's uh, all it is is another goal kick because the ball wasn't it was still deemed dead. And I, I think there's a sort of the uh, embryonic stages of a debate in the game to change that rule because that ball was never going to come out and striker actually stepped in to stop the attack from going on and it's anywhere else that would be a form of ungentlemanly conduct but the rules as they stand at the moment just allow for that and you've got to be a tick in the uh, tick in the box for the referees once more here's murray and empowers the linesman called that one he got that one spot on here's hap to marion reeve Insides to John. Striker within shooting range, still going, still going. Can he get it on that left foot? He does, he fires it down. It's a fantastic save low again by Larkin and Tuggerong struggling to clear this one and in the end it's bounced off of Sawan and another fantastic save from Larkin. Keeping him in the game, he's had a, he's had a very, very strong game. But these, the guys in front of him aren't helping him much. We're just standing off Roscoe Stryker as he makes his way forward. I think they've got to get a little tighter and try and get a challenge in. Well, they backed off and backed off and backed off, and Rocco Stryker hit that one low and hard, and it was well saved by Larkin. Keeps tugging on in it. Hopefully for a lively last 10 minutes or so here in the Charity Shield. Nodded out of play for a throw. 
So we've seen two changes for Olympic. It'll be interesting to see young Ali Sawan, see how he goes in this setup. New to the team, of course. Did find the net in pre season. Scored in the 3 3 draw against the Tigers. Adds a new dimension to their team as well. I'm sure we'll see a lot of him in, in the under 20s. Well, yeah, and, and he's pushed into a sort of attacking midfield role. So we'll see whether he can create for him and whether he gets on the end of things. And um, certainly his first involvement was tidy. But it's Tuggerong who have a free kick. Now they've loaded the box again. Five green and white shirts in there. As Murray looks to pick one out, he's overhit that one, and Constantinou had that one all the way, and he bowls it out to this towards Sawan, but Vinkum read it, swings it back in, and Constantinou had to be alert, and was not the uh, best-looking clearance by Constantinou, but Reeve makes the most of it. Does well, the winger, John. It's Cole Bataldo again. A lot of space for Vidika on this side if he could bring this down. Better touch this time and Vien comes on him, but Vidika bounces away from him. Off he goes in towards the penalty area, looking to take on. Walsh gets there, fires it in. And Paget does well and the clearance is completed by Walsh up towards it. Heggie. Now he says, get on your bike. And that's a lovely looking ball. Coggan tried to put him in the channel and Cole Bataldo had to be alert to clear. Absolutely. Good football both ways then. Um, Olympic nice combinations down their right hand side and then Tuggeranong reciprocating down theirs. Coggan switches play to Murray. Slavic. Padgett. Savage has been quite against second half. Hasn't done a lot. Haven't seen a lot of him. Worked hard, Worked hard defensively, but he hasn't been in the game when they've been in possession. Yeah, they seem to have uh, chosen to come down this flank a lot more than they did in, towards a Heggie than they have Slavic's flank. Well, he has done. He's done reasonably well so far for pre-season. That throw, a bit of pace there from uh, Sarwan. A bit of gas from the forward. Yeah, I mean, he, um, oh, I'll get a, I think it's MJ, is it, down to the little bit, oh, crap. Um, but, yeah, the little throw over the top, trying to get people in. Quite an effective, quite an effective tactic at this late stage of the game. Yeah, with 12 minutes remaining, not surprisingly, a couple of players are going down with cramp. These synthetic fields can be quite unforgiving, can't they, Steve? Certainly very, very hard on uh, your calves. And to be honest, the, the system they're playing with the uh, three at the back and MJ's been playing in one of those wider midfield roles, you've got to cover a lot of kilometres. So not surprising that at this early stage in a game with a little bit more than just a practice match intensity, he's just feeling a pinch a bit. He has been a willing runner all off, all evening for Olympic, who leads 2-1 if you've just tuned in. There's about 10 minutes to go in this 2018 Charity Shield. Olympic took the lead in the first half, a goal from Nick Popovich after 24 minutes. Jeremy Habitomarin doubled the lead after 35, but a goal right on the stroke of halftime from Daniel Sukowski brought Tuggerong back into it. Since then, there's been fewer goal math chances, opportunities at both ends. And Roy Larkins made two or three good saves to keep Tuggeron in it. And Ehegi was denied by Constantinou as well. So on the whole, Olympic probably just about shading it. And that's what it says on the scoreboard. Yeah, no arguments there. I think Tuggeron have sort of weathered the early second half pressure that was put on them by Olympic. And have just crept the way in. To, and they'll just fancy the chances of getting something out of this. Well, here's Cole Bataldo in the middle of the field. He's been a workhorse as usual, and he finds Vidika. Asked a lot of him with that pass, but he did exceptionally well to bring it down, and off he goes past Vienkum. He's just dropped the shoulder and swings it in towards the near post. It bounces away, and Chirac clears it up towards Coggan. Colbertaldo's there again. Perpetual bundle of energy, Danny Colbertaldo, but had a bit of a chunk of Coggan's shirt. Concedes a free kick. It's tireless, isn't he, Colbertaldo? Yeah, he's every. I mean, he plays that role really well. He's not just... A footballer, he's got, he's got a tremendous football brain, but he um, tidies up a lot of loose ball and keeps pressure on just outside the attacking third. He's a very good player. Murray sends that down the channel for Ehegi. Tries to get past Magic, who does well. Here's Vidika. Looking for a runner. Caught late by Coggan. I could have headed that one. Should have. Came just over our head. Out for a throw. It's out onto the highway. Someone's picked it up in their car and 
off to off to Bell Conan. It'll be on eBay later. A free kick has been awarded and Magic will take. Go short to Colbertal there. Nick Bobolus finds Tim. He clips it forward, looking for the run on that far side. It's a good run too. I think it was uh, the, the Nick Faust. Is that who's come on? Yeah, came on he's yeah, snuck on. MJ when uh, came on for Michael John when uh, after he went down with Crep. Nick Faust, a former Tuggeron player, of course, and I think he started at Belconnen, didn't he? Another Belconnen youngster and had a season with Tuggeron. Played for the academy as well. He swings that ball into the penalty area. Here's Colbert Taldo. Probably had more touches than anybody, apart from perhaps Rocco Stryker. Magic looks for the run out wide of Habta Merriam. Good pick out as well. Here's Habta Merriam. Got Faust with him. Goes back to Stryker. Olympic building again. Colbertaldo, short pass. Probably the first mistake he's made. He's got it back though. And again, asked a fair bit. Nick Bobolus finds Habta Merriam though. And Olympic seems to have a blue shirt over every time at the moment. Again, that's a sweeping ball towards Vidika. He'll take his marker on again. He's past Vienkum. Slides it in and hooked away by Chirek, who's covered back again. And Tuggeron can't get out of their own half here, Steve. And that's a free kick. Yeah, the out ball for Tuggeron is from Colbertaldo into wide areas. And they've played it time and time again. And if you don't get enough pressure on Danny Colbertaldo, sooner or later that's going to pay off. So lost you lost you just a second there. I think we just had a bit of a power outage. Uh, same fullback Jamie Vinkham learning one or two things about Oliver Vidika that he might not have known about. Absolutely. I mean, the uh, genuine pace frightens defenders, doesn't it? And Oliver's got that in spades. Striker sends that in, headed well away defensively once more by Walsh. Cobertala wins a loose ball, though, and he clips it in, and Habitat Merriam was away, but just too much on it. I like it more. Pump this one forwards. Time running out here. Here's Sawan. Magic. A bit more advanced than he has been. And that's a ball which Habta Merriam had gone too early for. So 2 1 to Olympic. Seven minutes to play. Larkin flicks it up towards Ehegi, who's uh, gone to the left hand side there, Steve. And won, a, and won a free kick. Nice ball from Larkin. Brought down well by. And I think he's the man. I think they've got to get him running at defenders and they can get something uh, out of that. Well, like you say, he's won a free kick for his team and a chance to send everybody forward. And Marco Guy is behind this one. Plenty of shirts in the box and joining them is Walsh. And Guy swings that one in towards Walsh. Out comes Constantinou and just grabs it in two Huge bear like pause and then thumps it forward towards Habtamarian and Larkin has had a sh <laughs> looks like a shot. It's going to bounce down and wins his team a throw in the end. Absolutely brilliant. Padgett puts a lot of pressure on and worked really hard to get little bits there. Larkin sweeping behind the defenders did well and tugging on back on the attack. He's certainly got a piece of that, Larkin. Is Murray Coggan. Giving it away and that's a free kick surely and the referee says play on. Good advantage, Habta Merriam looking for the run of Reeve. That's well defended. Good defending back there from uh, Andrew Slavich. Olympic causing their own problems here at the moment. Padgett towards Ehegi. Still going, I suppose, for Ehegi. And wins his team a corner. Well played. But it's, uh, it looks like they have thrown uh, Padgett further forward in the, in the hope of getting something out of the game. That's why Steve Forshaw's play, paid the big dollars at Belconnen in the under-18s there. That's why I was able to retire, that's right. Being able to call those things. Padgett is in the box, as we expected, and nothing to lose from Tuggeron in this last five minutes, plus 
A couple of minutes of stoppage time, I'd imagine. Let's see what they can do from this corner. Can they get an equaliser and force this game to penalties? Murray lines it up, swings it towards the far post. Churik came in with a header. Didn't get much on it, and it's another corner. Olympic don't agree. <laughs> Some of the young kids behind the goal trying to help out the referee as well. It's very difficult to see from here, but it looked like Turek was all over him and got the last touch. But benefit of the doubt, Lyndon's in a good spot. System referee. <laughs> Corner kick to Tuggerong again from this near side. Murray will take. Fires this one across, and it's near post flick on by Walsh, and it's bouncing around. There's a big call for handball. Referee had his whistle in his mouth, thought about it, and then lets it go. And at the other end, off goes Michael Reeve. He's still going, Reef. He's on his own. He'll have to do everything by himself. He's twisting and turning, looking to get a shot away. Pulls it back. Here's Habta Mariam. This is a swift break. Habta Mariam to seal it and does so. Thumps it in left footed. It's 3 1 to Olympic with minutes remaining. And that's a sucker punch on the break for Olympic. Brilliantly done from Michael Reeve. Controversy at one end. Tuggeron wanted a penalty. Olympic having none of it. Breaking away quickly. Great from Reeve and a great finish from Habta Mariam again. Yeah, lovely finish, but Reeve deserves all the credit there because he could have actually just gone on and had a shot and then we'd have just been looking at goal kick or another break from Tuggeranong. But the controversial moment in the game arrived at the other end when strong claims from a penalty are turned down after the referee looked odds on to give it. Couldn't tell from here myself, um, so I'm not prepared to say it was or it wasn't, but he certainly had a good think about it. So hypothetical question, Steve, if we had VAR in Canberra, would we now be disallowing that go and going back for a penalty if it, if it was handball? That, well, that's how the VAR system is supposed to work. I mean, you, you have to wait till the end of the phase, um, and then the referee will have a look at the decision that has been made or hasn't been made, and if it needs to be correct, and he would. But it's interesting, isn't it, that a goal would have to be disallowed because of that, and, how do you, and that can be done, but how do you fix an injury that occurs in that sort of situation? Well, Tuggeron trailing by two, looking to get them back into it. And now Constantin, who comes the flags up against Padgett. It's offside. As we push towards stoppage time. We're into last minute of play. Olympic on the balance, Steve, probably deserved that the victory. Although Tuggeron will probably feel a little bit hard done by. Yeah, I don't. I think 3-1 flatters them a little bit. I think they have been slightly the better team. Um... But certainly the second half, you know, the fact that Tuggeranong have gone into the half um, a goal behind, they certainly haven't, they certainly haven't looked um, a two-goal worse team than Olympic as the game becomes a little fraught, tempers fray a little. Yeah, um, Tuggeranong wanted to go early with a free kick. Rocco striker wasn't having a bar of it and just stood in front of it, but Bruno Kerr was having a chat with the players, so that's okay. And Murray will look to find... A Tuggeranong shirt in the box. It's a fairly flat free kick and it's headed clear. Here's Hap to Merriam. Two goals this evening. Here's Cole Bataldo and he'll switch play looking for Sarwan who's made a great run and Guy's going to have to be on his toes. Defends well. And Faust was in there with him as well and it's a throw in to Canberra Olympic. That might even be a free kick, is it? Or maybe he has called a free kick. Maybe Faust caught Gaia in his, uh, in his eagerness to get involved. But Olympic... Into stoppage time, Steve, and both sides will be able to take plenty of positives from this. I, I think so. I think Olympic have shown that they're not far off where they would like to be at the start of the season, and Tuggeranong will be looking forward to get some of the more established players back into the starting eleven once they're available. Um, but they, for a team that's probably lacking a little experience and are lacking that little bit of seniority, they've actually done quite well. Certainly the second half has been a very, very even game. But it's goals that win matches, and Olympic have three of them to Tuggeranong's one at the moment. Here's Murray, if there's time for a late consolation. Chipped forward, looking for the run, and that's just too far, and Jamie Vincom not happy with himself. He just put too much on that, and Angelo Constantino, using all his wiles, just lets that roll out of play. We're going to roll into stoppage time, and on the balance of play, Steve, you think both these sides have a decent shout at the four um, this season? There's no reason why they can't be competing for it. I mean, Olympic are probably favoured to finish in the top two, uh, certainly in the top four. Tuggeranong, after a long history of not making semi-finals, will be looking to change that. And 
you know, they lost um, Fernando from last year, and he had he had somebody of his quality and goal scoring ability into this side, even as it stands now. And you just about sort of make them certainties for the four. Well, Fernando, I understand, is attempting to come back to Canberra. He had to go back to South America, and he's uh, attempting to come back and join his teammates in Togolong for this season and as Steve said it will make a big difference as I said before though there's eight other players that Tuggerong have to bring into this squad and Olympic obviously have a few as well Fidika's ran that into Vincom he's pushed that forward to Padgett who's stuck out a boot and tried to divert that into the path of Sukovsky. bit of a shirt pull on Cole Bataldo. play on as Habtamerium has it still going and run outside him is Faust full of running obviously and he pulls that back Habtamerium on a hat-trick Tries to play it to Vidika, overloading shot from Vidika, cross goal and always fading away and out. It's probably going to go for a throw. I mean, 4 1 would have been devastating for Tagranong because it really they've conceded um, whilst they've been trying to snatch an equaliser. The third goal's come from a breakaway um, and the fourth goal nearly came the same way. Well, there's a mistake at the back and it could be four. And Larkin had to be alert to get rid of that under pressure from Sarwan. Coggan brings it down well. Vincom, back to Larkin, who first time just sends that forward. He's going to, won't be wanting back passes like that on Canberra, will he? <laughs> no, no. I mean, the uh, this surface is as true as you're going to get, and Canberra ain't going to mirror, mirror this. Canberra, Tuggeranong's notorious home ground. Kolbatala looks for Vidika, and he's got away from Vincom again. Pulls that back, shooting chance back for Kolbatala, and it's always fading away from goal, and... Went for the, opened his foot up when he needed to wrap his foot around it, really. Yeah, but a great move again. I mean, he's played the ball through and then he's backed up and got himself into a good spot. And again, they finish with a, uh, a strike on goal. I'm going to see a couple of substitutions here in the final minute of the game. In winter stoppage time, I think we've already got four minutes or so of stoppage time. So this is symbolic, I think, more than anything for Tagranong. It's uh, two young boys. Yeah, it's going to be... Um, Wild and Minot. And there's a substitution for Olympic in goal as well. Angelo Constantino comes off, replaced by James Christus, young goalkeeper from Olympic, who's uh, won their Golden Glove Award last year. So, again, another symbolic substitution there. So, three youngsters coming on Ben Minot and Josh Wild for Tagorong, and Christus in goal for the final few minutes. So, nice of them to get a bit of a feel. Yeah, terrific for them. I mean, obviously, not. Um taking too many risks, both coaching staff, both sets of staff. Um, but the, the boys that have come on will remember their debuts for a long time from here on in. I wonder if they get a touch. Coggan concedes the, thro the throw in. I wonder if any of them will get a touch of the ball. Probably not. We've not got much time to go. Nathan Magic running the clock down a bit. Throws it across field and Tim Bobolas just hooks that one away and stabbed forward. And that was a bit of a late challenge. Hands up straight away and Bruno Kale says no more of that. Must be well into stoppage time now. He's been, he's been very, very gentle with some of the players. I mean, that was an extremely late challenge and probably would have warranted a yellow card during the season. Um, but all in all, I've got to give him credit. He's had a decent game. So this will be the last chance for Tuggeron. We've got about six minutes of stoppage time. And that one swung in towards a penalty area. Vidika's going to win it, though, and nod it away. Vidika's there again and hooks it forward. Little shove in the back from Josh Wild. Had a touch earlier, and that's his... Uh, gives away a free kick for a foul on Sarwan. When it was at Tuggeron, Josh was playing for the under-16s. It makes me feel old. <laughs> Well, here he is making the first of what he'll hope will be many first grade appearances. And he's done well to get himself in the squad. And that's it. Referee Bruno Kell brings the charity shield to a conclusion. And uh, Steve, I think it's been a game in which Canberra Olympic have probably deserved to win. But we've seen uh, some decent football just kick us kickstart 2018 and promises a lot more to come. Well, I think yeah, there's a, a lot of games played with the same sort of technical ability. We can look forward to a decent season. I mean, it was a pre-season game, and we shouldn't soak it out of context. Um, we don't need to put too much weight of expectation on either group, but both of them can look forward to decent seasons. Tuggeranong, like I was saying earlier on, have a lot of players to come back in, but they've battled away well today. Um, they could do with a cutting edge. They just lacked a little cutting edge tonight. 
Uh, Olympic look to have picked up where they left off last season, where they won two of the three major trophies on offer. Um, and they've got quality to add to their squad as well. Um, so both teams, I think, can challenge for honours this year. Um, but if the other teams are going to match them, then we can have a decent competition. As you said, both teams, lots of players to come back in. And uh, this game itself, plenty of um, goals, four of them for us to look at. And, and, of course, a little bit of controversy there as well, Steve, with the, the shout for a penalty, which obviously the rules suggested the ball hadn't gone out of the area, so there's no penalty. And then, of course, the handball shout, and we went up the other end and got a goal. Yeah, Tagoranong will be um, a little disappointed that at least one decision hasn't gone their way. But it may well... It may well be that the referees have got them both right. Certainly in the first instance, the ball didn't come out of the box, so everything after that is irrelevant. But the handball changed the game, really. Tuggeranong were just creeping back into it, but the break after the penalty uh, after the penalty shout results in the third goal, and really that's game over. Thanks very much for your company tonight, Steve. We'll uh, speak to you again throughout the season, and thanks to Bar TV Sports for our live coverage here of the 2018 MPL Charity Shield here in Canberra, where a couple of goals from Jeremy Habtamarin and one for Nick Popovich against one from Danny Sukowski from Togarong has meant that Canberra Olympic begin the season where they ended last season by winning a trophy. It's finished Canberra Olympic 3, Togarong United 1.